Yeah, I will start my presentation. Yeah, I'm from Anandago. I'm a data science from Anandago. We build a real-time system in three months and put in production. So here I try, try to share our experience and something. Yep. So first I give the outline. I will give the motivation and then I will talk about the, the tools to develop a streaming system. They have tons of tools, whether the open source or vendor product. I will talk about the pros and cons of each thing and then why we pick this one. And then I will dip into our system and we have different kind of analytics module on this and I will explain to you. Although I, thought, I think a lot of them don't, doesn't have any during knowledge, so, but I will explain to you. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I don't have any experience on the Julian when I take this project, but after 10 months, I'm a, almost a Julian engineer. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the conclusion and the challenge. Uh, so a real-time streaming system really has several components. The first one is the data source, and then data collection, and magic system. That means you need to play with different source of data and kill them and do that kind of stuff. And finally go to the fun place that's a real time processing while we are here is the playground for our data science. We build out the model here and plug here and play with it. And finally we put in some in memory database so we can push to the UI so that the Turing engineer can, can use this in real time. So that's the structure. And here is the tools. You can see that the tons of tools available. He, this is the open source one, and this is the cross source one. And in the app is the product we call the product. In here we call the framework. The framework that means you need to do some lot of base programming. But the product a lot of time is the visual development and also everything is in one tools. So let's say the Kafka is just a matrix system. You need to hook up with the Spark streaming so that you can do the processing. So all of these tools can do one or another, but they cannot do one thing. But here, a lot of stuff, one tool can do all stuff for you. So it's easy for development. And here is some like uh, Microsoft Azure Hub, Event Hub, and also like the uh, Google Cloud and Amazon Kinsys. But this is the tools. Let me go to the next one. You will see the difference. So you can see that this is the system, the component we need to talk about. And when you go to the open source, this is the rig, the data come from, the drilling rig. And then you need a connector to get the data into your system. And then you use a Kafka to, Kafka is just an example, we have other system, but use a Kafka to do the messaging system and then you use the spark streaming to do the processing, the module, the kind of stuff, the fun stuff here. And then finally, you, the OpenSTSDB is just one example, but you need something to cache or in memory data in the, data in the memory so they can push to the UI so it's real time. It's like the stock market, the price is coming every second. And finally, you have the UI, it's Chrome. I like Chrome, the IE, so I put it here. <laughs> and the stream base is actually the product we pick. So when you come back to here, so this is the stream base in the top, we will pick to develop our stuff. So you can see this is the same. Root side, you need to get the same data. And so the remaining actually is stream based is one tool. So that's why we pick it. It's easy for us to handle because once I know it, I don't need to play all of them together and hook up together. So, so this is stream based, the medicine system to handle this one. The real time processing, the model, we can plug in and run it. And also they have uh, live data map, that is the in-memory database we can use and finally push the UI. So you can see in the open source, it's very good. But you need uh, some skill developer to make it happen, especially when you, it's not very good if you want to get, want to get something in a, in a third time. But for the stream base, it's everything is in, in one, one tool. So, so this is the pros and cons. So like the one thing I don't like the stream base is because they run in one computer. Once the, com once the computer is done, it's done. But the, for the Spark streaming, I just list here. In the Spark streaming or like the big data solution is in the NAR or in the, in the, 
in the in cluster. This time that one's still running. So this the that's this is this one I'm talking about. And also the when talking about the machine learning or like deep learning, the cross source one is not very good when you want to deploy it. And the for the cons is too many of them. There are more than 20 of them. I just list some of them. And for the Windows side, you can see they always had the, the visual development environment. Also, they are one two, and but the pros, the cons is actually is the pros here. So it's the same as the PC and the and the Mac. In the PC, you can buy the CPU, you can buy the memory stick, you can buy the motherboard, this and hook them together, and they're running. They're running, but it's not optimal. But the Mac is always in one piece. It's UI UX is very good, but it's not that open. Another reason we picked the stream base is the time time value. We want to prove the concept in in a short time. So the stream base, because because I don't know why it's not working, because it's a, it's a single tool and the development environment is very good. So usually it's as uh, less than or three months, you can get uh, something out of the project. That's what we have here. We, we development, we have one data science, one two engineering, and two part-time developer, and we hook up the system and put in production in three months. But the open source is very demanding for the because the, you need to load the programming, you need to do have good, uh, some of the good programming to make it happen in the beginning. But we still want the open source one because in the future we can see that we will use more machine learning and deep learning stuff, not training the model in real time, but we will use the model in real time. So we are trying to create another system and put it there, use the open source tools. This is our architecture. So the data is from here and then Hook up with the connector and finally push to the module layer here, analysis layer. Right now we have about seven modules under production or un under development, some of them. And then this is the this is the actually this is the static data. I say the static data is because the model not always uses the streaming data. They also have some data like the talking gen model. You still need the the way of the drilling pipe or what kind of drilling bit you use when you drill the well. This kind of information is saved in the database in Anadarko. So we need to put the data and fit in here. And run the model and push. And one is go to the UI, one is go to the map bar for the communal storage. So that's our architecture. Open. Here I like the open because that's the open system in idea in my mind. One is the data layer. Is interchangeable because right now we use the XML. The latency of the data is about 10 to 15 seconds. That means right now we had 15 second delay in the data. So we, we are working on another solution try to reduce the latency, the delay to two to three seconds. And also the analytic layer, we want the, this layer to be more open because we have very good Data science team in Anadarko, we have a lot of good data science. They just come and build the model and plug it and run it. Do a lot of fun stuff here. So that's what we hope the future look like. And also UI, I hope the UI is not programming, just we have a lot of reach. We just pull it and play with it and make it as a UI. It's like Grandfather, but Grandfather doesn't have the much library we have right now. So that's the idea, not the current one. Okay, the module. Right now, I have, we have four modules running. One is ready for deployment, and another two is under development. So I will give in to, majority of them are vehicle-based, because the drilling team needed this module in the daily base. So we do that. Only the RDGS is the machine learning base, or others physics base. I read in all the paper, and derive all the equation and convert into a core and put it running here. So that's why I tell you, I became a drilling engineer right now. And this is the fourth module, it's a very basic one. So every second we had the data coming. So we had a lot of rules to identify what the loop is doing right now. It's doing trip in, trip out, or rotation during or sliding during. So every second we know that what the loop is doing. 
So it's like, right now all you guys sit here and listening. So that's identified the tuning activity. It's the base for, the, for all other modules. And this is called SDGS. This is, let me put it this way. So when we do a well, we will have a plain well pad, like the red one. You need to follow the plain one, the red one. How to follow that one, you need to give the geolog the instruction, how to geo. So it's similar to when you drive from Anadarko to Rice. The GPS, the Google map, give you a router from Anadarko to Rice. But they also need to give you when to turn left, when to turn right, and when to go straight. So here, this is, we had uh, the red one, the plain one. So this algorithm will tell the geolog when you are do the sliding, when you do the, how long you do the sliding. So it's how can you, you have the jeweler to keep track with the plan well pad. So it's the same as the, the instruction of the GPS. This is one. And another one is this, this one is interesting. This one is like when you, the GPS give you the, the plan, but you don't follow the plan, you deviate from the plan. So how can you get back to the, the original one? So here the, this one, the black one, actually is the plan well pair, and you are drilling to here, so you are off the plan. The green one will go tell you how to go back to the plan one. So the, this is the real, real well data. So this is the plan well pair. You need to follow this one, but the guy did a very bad job, so ju -ju -ju all the way deviate to here. <laughs> so the, this is the green one tell you how to come back. So it's the same when you, the CBS tell you how to drive to rice, but you drive to KT, and how can you come back to rice? So that's the module, look like. How much time I have? Okay. So this, uh, this is another we call the talk and drag. Talk, it actually is the, this is the talk. Sorry, if you guys don't have the background, I, I'm sorry. It's a lot of uh, dueling, uh, Knowledge here, the torque and the drag. The torque is like when you drill the well, your, your pipe is rotating, that causes the torque. And when you drill the well, you need to move the pipe up and down, that's the drag. So torque and drag is the indicator whether you drill a good well or the, the downhole con condition is good or not. It's like when you drill the well, you have a lot of cutting in the hole, so your, 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 your pipe is very tight, you cannot turn the pipe. That means you almost stuck your pipe. So this model is a fixed based model. So when you drill the well, you have the real time data, the top and drag data from the, from the sensor. And also the model will tell you what's supposed to be. Like, okay, the model tells you that, okay, your drag is about 500 pounds, but actually it's 1,000 pounds. So that's the back indicator. That means you have lots of cutting in the ground and your pie is going to start. So you, can, you cannot continue to drill. You need to stop and then clean the hole before you drill, otherwise you will stuck the pipe and you need to cut the pipe, you do the side check. That costs a lot of money. So here, this is the actual data. And this is the predicted data. This is not a very good example because I don't do the calibration, but the train is almost the same. This is not very good because of, the, this is a little off. This is also a little off. But all these train is almost the same chain as the prediction one. So, okay. The last one is like, when you have like this pad, when we drill the well, we have a pad here. You already drill nine well here. And you want to drill, drill the 10 well. So this model will tell you, use the machine learning, like I will learn the best drilling parameter in this nine well and compose a good one so you can use to guide the drill the new well. So it's like when you drill from Anandako to here, you drive several times. And sometimes you drive very really good, you, the miles per gallon is 100 per gallon. And sometimes you drive very really bad, 10 miles per gallon. So the machine will get, pick the best one and, and composite, say, okay, when you drive, uh, drive to, let's like, say, the 45, you need to keep the speed at 60 and then do something so you can get the best mileage. It's so the same here. It's, uh, you drill 10 well or 9 well in the pad, you, you, you learn from this 9 well and Compose the new low map for the for when you to guide the new one to when you, you want to do here. So that's the idea. Okay, what else do we have? Okay, almost there. <laughs> yeah, because I only have 15 minutes. I lot of cover. So the conclusion is in three months. 
we build this system and put in the production, the jeweler lies. Because the jeweler right now doesn't have anything to look at, it's just like, <laughs> they lie is very much. So we, we deliver to the jeweling engineering team and get their bike in the life so we can do more fancy stuff. We give them a bike, right later we can give them a, a, a car or a, a rocket. And the, the system is growing because right now we already built a system. We have a bunch of good data science, like Nutter here. So we can, they can come and just build the model and put here and launch. The challenge is like, as a real-time system, get all the data real-time to put in the model is really demanding. So it's like the streaming data is one of them, but you still have other data. So how to get the data in real time and put into it is very demanding. And also the UI UX is very important because the jeweler only care about UI UX. They don't care anything behind that. And, and also we, we've tried to reduce the latency and also we try to, we have good data science right now. So we want to build the whole system in the open source tools. Okay, thank you, sorry, three minutes. Any questions? We have time for questions. Yeah, hi, Daryl Fett with Total EMP. Uh, great presentation. Uh, I had a question. You, you mentioned an alternative to Whitson and all. I'm not. I'm not really aware of anything that that would. Uh, keep you standardized with all the contractors except maybe OPC UA. Uh, which version of WITS are you using? And if you have you went to the uh, 2.0 with ETP? Uh, I think it's 1.4 right now. But we try to use the Rixel because we, we want to move some of the model to the Rix side. So we have three labels in the future. One is in the office. We have some heavy computing like the deep learning in the office. In the Rix side, the company man. In front of that, they may have another one. And in the rig, we do some auto drilling. So some of the model needed to auto -cal calculate and feedback to the calculate the control system of the rig. So, yeah, that. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I think uh, that we're, we're we have an operators group on data quality. I'll talk to you afterwards about that. We're we're trying to get some of this standardized and pushed through all the operators, and we're trying to push it to uh, 2.0 with ETP with all the the service companies. And then uh, for inter interoperability, we're, 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 we're trying to push OPC UA. For, that's yeah, for OPC equipment. UA we yeah. is, is one of our options. And, the and they're doing a companion protocol too, you may know, between the two, so. Yeah, okay. Any other questions? You say you're developing a hydraulics model. I guess the first question is, is what language are you using to develop your hydraulics model? And is that in-house built, or are you getting some sort of off-the-shelf package for that? Okay. All the model here is built by our data science. I'm not the, uh, sorry. Uh, we, I don't know, uh, here let's see, come back to the model. Uh, yeah, here, so we have all the same model here. I build almost all the model except the hydro model. So you, you ask the, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have another data science, the lady, the smart lady, he reading a lot of paper, about 100 paper and try to put the model into an R script. So all the model here is in R script. That's I don't like the stream base because they, they either use the adapter or use the R, it's very low efficiency. So that's we try to, but it's help us to replicate every, something in three months. It's very helpful, yeah. And that's all being processed on your typical environment, correct? Yes, it's a, yeah. So you can see all the model, I build all the, almost all the model except the hydraulic one. I'm reading tons of papers, so <laughs> I told you I'm a tuning engineer right now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, please, let's thank our speaker again. Okay, thank you.